Hello, welcome to the last session uh, of the day. Uh, we have three presentations uh, and they are in the category of health care and APIs. Uh, so the first one is uh, of, uh, from uh, Philips where Nico Eloma is going to talk about enhancing radiation oncology workflows uh, with APIs and third-party applications. So let's welcome Nico and, uh, okay, you are in and you have the stage. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Nico Eloma and I work at Philips Radiation Oncology Solutions in R&D department as a software group leader. And I'm going to take you through uh, our landscape of implementing uh, several products to the radiotherapy planning and implementation workflows, and then open up uh, the ecosystem and joint value creation uh, possibilities with third party applications too. Yes. So, So uh, first, some words about us uh, as a company. Everybody probably knows the Philips brand, uh, uh, but we are the sub part of Philips uh, belonging to the precision diagnostics cluster and our name is radiation oncology. So we are creating tooling and, and products uh, to treat cancer with radiotherapy. Everything we do is basically somewhat somehow connected uh, to treating cancer. So I think that's a very serious subject because it's a, a serious, horrible disease. So I, I think that's something that every day for us gives motivation and, and meaning for our, our work days. And we are the unit in Finland. Uh, we are having other units also in US and in India. Uh, but now I concentrate mostly on these uh, products that we are creating in our, our uh, unit in, in Helsinki. And uh, the areas there uh, are heavily uh, connected to the magnetic resonance imaging. There is actually a long, long history on our site about MR imaging uh, over 40 years continuum of, of excellence around those subjects. We are about 100 people strong site plus some in, in our uh, global network. And now we've been working remotely uh, almost exactly a year because of this COVID pandemic. Okay, then some product areas, like I mentioned, we are working in radiotherapy for cancer care. And uh, we are having uh, two main lines of product products uh, in our portfolio that we are creating in our Helsinki unit together with our, our Bangalore teams too. Uh, part of them are revolving around MR usage in uh, cancer care. So the both the the planning of the treatment and also then delivering of the treatment too. Then we are also having purely mechanical products. This MROR is application that enables uh, re, uh, MR imaging during the surgical operation. And so then some of our more software centric products, IntelliSpace Radiation Oncology, which, which will be more in focus today's presentation because that's the place where most of the integration to the third parties are happening. But then one uh, very interesting algorithmic product in, in our landscape is to this synthetic uh, CT image creator from MR images, but an important part of enabling fluent workflow. So here you can see that, that our product portfolio is very diverse from purely mechanical hardware products to, uh, to implement something important in the hospital's workflow to pure software platform products that are actually web-based UIs is the end, end user interface to there. So a lot of variants, and it means that we need to have actually a lot of separate skills in our R&D department, uh, compliance, hardware design, radio frequency design, uh, oncology specific clinical knowledge, regulatory and compliance, which is very, very important because we sell medical devices globally and so on. Um, of course, R&D, software development and so on. So, 
a little bit background uh, about magnetic resonance imaging possibilities uh, in radiotherapy planning. Just a few few slides, not not going more deeper because the subject is very much complex and also beyond my true competence. So I only touch it. So here on the left, you can see the computer tomographic image, CT image. Uh, not very good soft tissue contrast. And on the right side, you can see the MR image, which is showing much, much more detail in, in soft tissue in this image of a pelvis for radiotherapy planning. And uh, what we are needing is the highly geometric accuracy in imaging and uh, so on. Important things is that we can do the imaging in treatment position. Position is everything in radiotherapy planning and, and imaging workflows. And this part of our total workflow. Then something about to touch this wider ecosystem perspective. We are also integrating existing third-party products uh, to our own product portfolio, these magnetic resonance simulation packages that are used in uh, imaging and treatment position planning during the treatment planning workflow. So here are some ex examples of hardware specific integration. So no software APs this time, uh, but, but third party imaging coils and Im immobilization and positioning devices for radiotherapy. Because the treatment planning time Im images need to be taken exactly at the same position from the patient than the planned treatment will be doing. So then it's very important that these positioning devices are compatible and we can use the similar devices or exactly the same devices that then are used in linear accelerator in delivering the treatment. So we have experience and, and existing ways to integrate these third party thing, uh, products to be part of our own offering too. So hardware specific leg of our, our ecosystem thinking. Then something about value of this magnetic resonance imaging uh, in radiotherapy. Typical workflow uh, actually requires both MR and CT imaging. So then the images need to be infused together and that's kind of labor intensive and both, both labor in intensive and complex operation. So we are simplifying that by our MR cut synthetic imaging to reduce the steps because then uh, it's faster for the patient. That's one of the core values. Time to treatment needs to be reduced and, and so on. So here we can, we can then deliver the benefits of this soft tissue contrast, skip the registration step, make the MR more affor affordable in this because it and then increases the plan quality. And, uh, and then reduce the patient burden because there are less appointments and the whole flow from diagnosis to treatment is faster. Then uh, continuing on system side about our partnership and ecosystem activities. Uh, Philips has been partnering with Electa, uh, other provider of cancer care applications. Uh, this is now describing Electa's latest linear, ac linear accelerator for delivering the treatment. And this is Electa Unity. Uh, and uh, Philip's part is to create uh, this MR scanner that is actually integrated inside uh, the linear accelerator so that patient can be same time uh, MR imaged while the treatment is ongoing. So that offers superior uh, positioning accuracy because the treatment doesn't need to rely on images taken on other session on other day but the most recent images can be taken on ac exact treatment position and this is very complex joint venture uh, between Electan and Philips because it's a totally integrated two very complex machines and uh, of course it consists of hardware integration system integration uh, radio uh, frequency integration and also software APIs so that the Electa system can utilize the MR scanner made by Philips for real-time acquisition of MR images on Electa system. Then uh, let's start approaching more uh, software dem domain. 
and this is our one of the core products intelli-space radiation oncology uh, on a lighter note we we sometimes call this jira for radiotherapy so it's meant uh, for for simplifying uh, the overall or all overall complexity of this radiotherapy workflows that are actually very complex and are comprising of several specialist roles and let's go to see see the example of the flow so this is actually all, also the timeline where all our products i have mentioned are present in some part of the time and now this timeline describes the time and actions from the treatment selection after the diagnosis then uh, it has been selected that, that okay this time disease is best treated with radiotherapy so then let's enter to this therapy planning and delivery uh, pipeline so first there are imaging sessions either with mr only if that's available or mr and ct and contouring so various specialists are adding metadata to the acquired images this is good to remember because it's later in the presentation point where i mentioned about the integration <clears throat> and then there are various approval steps by other specialists that the plants are okay and are actually good for treating this disease for this patient uh, then the actual radiotherapy plan is created that 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 is actually uh, the way uh, the linear accelerator is controlled to pinpoint the radiation to, to the actual treatment target so that we are maximizing the radiation uh, to the cancer and saving as much healthy tissue as we ever can. And that also requires plenty of steps for physics steps, uh, checks and uh, approval from medical doctor and sometimes depending on the clinic even external quality assurance software that double checks the plan and uh, one uh, feature of this whole workflow is that uh, there is no one way one global way to do it it can vary a lot depending on uh, geographic location uh, clinic whether it's a university hospital doing research as well and so on and also depends a lot about vendor specific solutions here you can see these dots they are they are representing some action to be done so it, it's kind of value adding work e either patient is imaged to acquire more data to be um, feeding in the la later steps or then some decision is done about uh, positioning or so on and that that equals a work step then in between there are these wait times for patient data to be moved from system to another uh, appointment for the patient to next day to, to be on the next stage of this and so on and total this can be taking actually multiple weeks and what is our mission here is uh, that with this intelli-space radiation oncology we can reduce these wait times so facilitate the planning for the clinic better so that the patient's flow from treatment selection to actual treatment is shorter but then it's also benefit for the clinic because they, they are having a lot of lot less of wait time for their expensive investment to various systems checking the clock okay so here is the clinical data example about uh, the typical uh, throughput times so in certain u.s centers uh, u.s centric study there's been for example values of 33 to, to 68 days from first doctor visit to the start of the treatment and that's horribly long time and it's not good if the disease uh, uh, is of rapidly spreading type then there starts to be actually effect uh, to survival of the patients so it's not just uh operational uh optimization or just about uh optimizing the patient throughput for clinic it's actually quality of treatment uh, and effectiveness of the treatment for the patient faster the treatment can be started the better the results are so we want to manage the complexity improve the efficiency in those steps and enable operational excellence and now thinking of this data integrity and automated workflow so we start to approach these integrations but next let's see some typical screens of this intelli-space radiation oncology 
So there is a department view. So all the patients kind of in the treatment and their position in this workflow. Some are in, in the early steps uh, for, for these simulations and so on. And some are actually in dose planning or delivering. So this is good for the clinic to see the overview on what kind of patients they are having and, and on which stage they are. Then uh, for single user in varios of those multitude of roles, uh, there is a clear task list uh, that what should be done, for example, today for these patients by this specialist that is using the system. So there are user roles and, and uh, dedicated views for use cases. And this helps in prioritization. Sometimes in existing workflows, this data would be totally manual or even in paper format in, in old fashioned paper inbox in, in internal mail. So it's easy to imagine how much we can uh, accelerate these wait times by digital solutions that offer instant view to the tasks. And then while seeing the exactly the example patient can show the position in, in this treatment flow. Again, that's kind of crucial information that than which state state this planning is in. And then various data points that are then configured to support the exact clinic's own workflow that might be customizable uh, so that ex exactly right information is showed for each step for the patient. And so we can provide harmonized way of working of going through the treatment planning for various diseases. So this is kind of the, the scenario where we are at. And now, since we are talking about ecosystem value, uh, and integration to APIs. Let's let's start that journey. So currently we are having certain partners that we are actually naming here. Uh, we are having more in the pipeline, but due to NDA specific reasons, we don't we don't mention any more partners at this stage. Pinnacle is actually other Philips product that are we produce too at the Philips Radiation Oncology. Uh, it's the treatment planning system used at the later stages of the workflow to create the plan. Then both MIM and Mirada are external contouring tools. So uh, clinics are having their own, own preferences that which tool fits better, for example, to the disease types and treatment uh, machinery they are using. And also what has been most familiar to them uh, to, to implement in their workflow. So. Uh, according to our, our uh, business analysts, typical impact or, or solutions from single vendor is, is maximum 50% of the solution space of a single clinic. So no vendor alone can cover uh, the whole uh, offering uh, that the clinic is needed needing to implement this complex workflow. Hence, there will be always multi-vendor um, environment and integration. So it's a good, how should I say, environment and backdrop uh, for our integrations. So these can then be customized and integrated uh, to the Philips Radiation Oncology uh, products, such as this IntelliSpace Radiation Oncology, so that they are automatically opened for the right patient at the right time. So that's a one huge ecosystem possibility. Uh, so that we can leverage jointly with the partners uh, common value stream uh, for to to benefit the customer. Again, so in, in these contours, so there might be any of uh, existing contour approval uh, and, and contouring applications here in use. Okay, and then since we are creating these integrations and having these integration capabilities would be very interesting to see how else we can leverage uh, these systems. This is the example of architecture at the site. So we are having a Philips software platform that is hosting the IntelliSpace Radiation Oncology, and there is space for more uh, so that we can utilize the, uh, the uh, value of this in, uh, whole system and extend it over time. And uh, it's access, accessible through web browser. These are all, all web interfaces. And then we have the Philips Pinnacle uh, that is integral part of the workflow. And uh, then 
there are space for routing the third party devices so that they can be integrated to, to our solution space. Okay, this was a kind of surface scratch, but it, it was really hard to fit in more uh, complex information to this 20 minutes. And I think now I, I want to thank you for listening. Uh, hopefully, this was uh, informational for you. And now it's time for questions and answers. So, Vlad, do we have any questions coming? Uh, yeah, well, let's give some time for the people there to, mm -hmm. to write the questions. And uh, first of all, thanks for, uh, for the talk. Uh, it was uh, a deep dive, in a way, into an area where we see that, okay, <laughs> you have a Jira for, uh, for people. So that's, uh, that was a bit uh, funny and scary at the same time. Uh, I don't know what yeah. is the direction there, but yeah. Uh, so I, I will start with a question here. Uh, like uh, you, you obviously you cannot uh, talk too much about uh, individual uh, uh, third parties. But uh, what kind of size of a third party ecosystem do you have? Um, uh, like I mentioned, now we mentioned those three names: Mim, Mirada, and Plan IQ from Sun Nuclear. But then we are having more in the pipeline, let's say so. Uh, and and uh, then we, one without brand names, one area is, is uh, then university hospitals, research facilities that, that could be utilizing the same ways to integrate to the data and, and utilize that. And uh, but, uh, if you are asking about the size of the companies, then some might be smaller, even startups could be doing something very interesting here, because if they are having a good relation to the university hospital and they are able to tap into this value creation of this larger ecosystem, that might be a very, very interesting sales model for us to advertise their compatibility uh, to other systems and integration opportunities. And that's something that we really are going to emphasize in, in coming years. So I hope that in may, maybe next time, uh, we we could be approaching a little, little bit more about that, that sort of opportunity that what what could be available with more like open APIs to access the data. Yes, thank you. So actually, you you uh, my my question was more more into the direction of the number of integrations that you have, but actually uh, the size of each integrator is also important because mm -hmm. I mean it shows like how accessible the platform is mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if it if it's case for from startups yeah. uh, then is and uh, another like practical question like mm -hmm. uh, do you have a developer portal for this uh, at this stage not available in internet but we have a uh, planned capabilities to then help the partners uh, to integrate and verify their solutions most likely we are talking about medical devices here so it's a bit more complicated in entering the market with a uh, uh, approved medical device type of solution than, how should I say, more uh, consumer application or business application centric uh, API integration for common value creation. So uh, what might be that we, we have something open uh, someday, but definitely I, I think that in this process, as we see it now, uh, this sort of one-to-one -one relationship is needed to to really uh, ensure the quality of the integration and also the regular regulatory compliance. Okay, so just a moment. We have a question that we received mm -hmm. a question in the chat. Uh, Eliel Goko is asking, like, have there been any moral or ethical concerns in using these technologies in the field of oncology? Uh, of course, uh, that's part of the process of releasing uh, uh, any any sort of product in, in this solution space. Uh, oh, there always, always needs to be the risk management and uh, uh, related analysis that what are the risks for the patient and what are the risks for the uh, products and even the regulatory side, uh, the notified bodies are expecting to see, see these analysis and results uh, there. But I think yeah. since the world is moving to digital and the burden of cancer is increasing due to uh, increased age of the population, for example, uh, there is simply need uh, to make the, the treatments more accessible for wider amount of yes. audience. One, so. Thanks. Uh, one last question. Uh, 
Torgir Amundsen is asking uh, if uh, you plan support or fire APIs. Uh, short one because we are yes. right on. Yes, uh, yes. Didn't go that deep in in the uh, pre presentation. That. Uh, technical aspects, but in addition to DICOM, DICOM RT, HL7, uh, FIRE is, is definitely on our list of interest. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Nico. And now it is time to move to the next.